today I'm appealing for leadership from politicians, from business and scientists, and from the public everywhere. We have the tools to make our actions effective. What we still lack, even after the Paris Agreement, is the leadership and the ambition to do what is needed. And what makes all of this even more disturbing is that we were warned. Scientists have been telling us for decades, over and over again, and far too many leaders have refused to listen. And far too few have acted with the vision the science demands. And we see the results. In some situations, they are approaching scientists' worst case scenarios. The world's richest nations are the most responsible for the climate crisis, yet the effects are being felt first and worst by the poorest nations and the most vulnerable peoples and communities. Existing technologies are waiting to come online, cleaner fuels, alternative building materials, better batteries, and advances in farming and land use. And these and other innovations can have a major role in reducing greenhouse gas emissions so we can hit the Paris targets and inject the great ambition that is so urgently needed. Let us use the next year for transformational decisions in boardrooms, executive suites, and parliaments across the world. Let us raise our sights, build coalitions, and make our leaders listen. There is no more time to waste. As the ferocity of this summer's wildfires and heat waves shows, the world is changing before our eyes. We are careering towards the edge of the abyss. It is not too late to shift course, but every day that passes means the world eats up a little more and the cost of our inaction mounts. Every day we fail to act is a day that we step a little closer towards a fate that none of us want, a fate that will resonate through generations in the damage done to humankind and life on Earth. Our fate is in our hands. The world is counting on all of us to rise to the challenge before it is too late. I count on you all.